Hello, welcome to Soundbridge. We wanted to show you what's new in the version 2.3.0. One of the biggest changes we've made is to the crossfades and how they're applied. Now you can create crossfades in the sequencer directly. No need to go into a merge file. So as soon as you overlap two blocks, the crossfades are available right here. So you hover your mouse over the intersection and you will see these two white points pop up so you can just move them. And of course, now these snap to the grid. Okay, so if I turn off the snap, it's going to be much more fluid, just like that. So there's a crossfade right there in the sequencer. Now, I wanted to mention also that fades, normal fades, now also snap to the grid, just like this. Let's get back to our crossfade. So now when I click on this crossfade that I've created, I can just drag this middle point, of course, and change the nature of the crossfade. And if I did anything and just double-clicked it, it would reset automatically. You can also right click on these two points right here. So if I click on this one, see it changes the shape of one of the crossfades, right clicking the other one changes the other one too. Now the best thing about this is imagine if we had more than one crossfade. Okay, so let's create another one just like this. And I could select both of those by holding control and just clicking on one then on the other. So clicking somewhere inside of the crossfade and I can move them both at the same time at the same rate. I can resize them both just like this. So both sides and I could in theory move both of them. So imagine if this had more leeway like that. So if both of these had more space on each side of the audio just like that. If it was cropped out a tiny bit. So imagine if the file has more space on both sides, you can actually move the entire crossfade left and right. I could multi select and move two of these crossfades at the same time, just like that, left and right. And when there's no more space, you see they're going to shrink slowly, yeah, because there's no more audio at the end of that block. Now having all of that happen, you can multi select all of those crossfades. So imagine you had like many more than just two. If I hold A on my keyboard and I lasso, you see it's only selecting the crossfades. If I lasso normally, it would select all the blocks. But if I hold A on my keyboard, lasso over crossfades, it selects only the crossfades and I can of course now move them, double click to reset. So anything you could do on a single crossfade, now you can do on multiples. So we completely overhauled how fades are handled and as I said, you can you know apply them straight from the sequencer now. We still do have those merge blocks. So if I merge these three blocks, you will see that now this merge block looks a tiny bit different. It has this dotted edge. Now you can differentiate merge blocks from regular audio blocks. And inside that merge block, you can still control those fades. You can still control individual audio files, you know, by shortening them, doubling them, you know, changing their pitch or whatnot. So you can still do all of that. And most importantly, you can unmerge that block. So I had something in that block. Let's say I double this again and again, I make some more crossfades and I double this again. Okay, so imagine I have all of this in that merge block. Let me scroll down. See that merge block is now quite long. Imagine I click this unmerge button and that unmerge button is right here as well. So as soon as you click on a merge block, the merge button changes to unmerge. And if you do that, if you unmerge it, it's going to keep everything it possibly can. It's just going to unmerge the block and it will keep all the settings for all the audio files or the crossfade. So everything stays as intact as possible. Alongside this major overhaul, we always try to enhance the usability of the features we introduce. So imagine when adding a track like this, a MIDI track, and you wanted to select an instrument, well, now you have a search field where you can just type in, let's say, Serum or whatever synthesizer you want. But alongside that, you can also see if the instrument you're adding is a VST2 or a VST3 version in case you have both. The last thing I wanted to show you, but not least, of course, is how we improved the Recents folder in Navigation. This is where all the locations you navigated to accumulate. So if I navigate to any place in any of these directories, I go back to recents, it's going to be accumulated there. If I navigate again, I go back, all of those accumulate in the recent section. Now, historically in this folder, we had only my computer and documents, but we decided to add some more of these friendly locations. So it's easier for you to navigate to. 
So we have this computer, which takes you to all of your hard drives. We have desktop, which takes you to a desktop folder. And the standard, we have downloads, documents, music, all of those familiar places. And all of those, when double click, they're going to open in the last directory that you selected. So if I select number three, open music, that's where it's going to be shown. And that's not the end. So if you go to, let's say, open or save a project, you will see that in this dialog for navigation, you have those shortcuts so that you can quickly navigate and get to wherever you need to be. We hope you like the improvements and have fun using SoundBridge.